Another type of production that may increase the number of steps required to produce a given string is a unit production, which replaces one variable with another variable. Our algorithm for eliminating lambda production suggests an analogous algorithm for eliminating unit productions. Will it work? Well, let's find out. Suppose our production rules are S produces AB, A produces B, and B produces AA. A produces B is a unit production. Since B produces AA, then A produces B produces AA, and so we can add the rule A produces AA. We also have S produces AB and A produces B, so that gives us BB, so we need S produces BB, and B produces AA, which produces AB, so we need to rule B produces AB. And so our new production rules will be As with lambda productions, where we found all variables that could eventually produce the empty string, we want to find all variables that could eventually produce any single variable. And this motivates the following definition. A variable is said to be A derivable if either A produces it or something produces it where our something is A derivable. Intuitively, B is A derivable if there's some production from A to B with no other variables or terminal symbols. This also suggests a recursive method for finding the A derivable variables. We'll start with an initial set, which is all the unit productions of A, and then we'll form a larger set, which includes all those plus all the unit productions from those variables. And we lather, rinse, repeat until we get the same set as before. So, for example, if we want to find the A derivable sets for this set of rules, so A produces B as our obvious unit production, so B is in our initial set. To find additional elements for D1, we want to find all productions from B where X is not A. So we see that B produces C, so C is going to be our new element in D1. To find additional elements for D2, we want to find all productions C produces X, where X is not A. So even though we do have this production C produces A, we omit it, and there's nothing new that B produces, so there are no additional variables in D2. And since D2 equals D1, we can stop here. And so these are all the A derivable variables. This leads to an algorithm for simplifying our grammar. First, we'll eliminate all the lambda productions. Then, for every variable, find the set of A derivable variables. Let's take our set of production rules. Then, for every A derivable variable and every production X produces something that is not a unit production, we'll add in the rule A produces that same something, and then we can eliminate all unit production rules from P1. Intuitively, if we have a unit production, we're going to just keep going until we have a non-unit. So let's eliminate all unit productions from our grammar. Since we have the unit production A produces B, let's start by finding our A derivable set, which we already did, that's BC. Now, note that we have the non-unit productions B produces BB, and C produces BC. Since B is A derivable, we know that we can start at A, eventually produce B, and then apply our non-unit production, taking us on to BB, so we can add the rule A produces BB. Likewise, since C is A derivable, we know we can start at A, eventually get to C, and then produce BC, so we can add the rule A produces BC. Note that we also have the unit production B produces C, so we find our B derivable set. 
and this will be CA. And again, note that we have the non-unit productions. Since A is B derivable, we can derive B produces A, and then A produces one of these, so we need to actually add the three rules B produces. Likewise, since C is B derivable, we know that we can derive B eventually gets to C, which takes us to BC, so we add the rule B produces BC. We still have the unit production C produces A, so we want to find the C derivable variables. These are A and B, and we have the non-unit productions. Since A is C derivable, then C eventually produces A, which could go to any one of these, so we need to add them as rules. Likewise, since B is C derivable, we have a production C eventually produces B, which then produces one of these, and so we add these rules as well. Although in point of fact, they're already there. And at this point, we can eliminate the unit productions. While our new rules are much more extensive than our old ones, they have no lambda productions and no unit productions. This means that at every step, we'll either add a new non-terminal symbol or replace a non-terminal symbol with a terminal symbol. So consider the length of the string after each production. We start with s, so at each step, the length increases by at least one if we add a non-terminal symbol, or the length stays the same, which can only happen if we replace a non-terminal symbol with a terminal symbol, or increases if we also include additional non-terminal symbols. So the production of a string of length k will take at most 2k minus 1 steps. After at most k minus 1 steps, s will be a string of length k consisting entirely of non-terminal variables. After at most k additional steps, these non-terminals will be converted into terminals. Consequently, we have an upper bound on the number of steps required to decide if a string is part of the language.